Hi everyone, I'm Thalia from the Comfy team, and today I'm joined by Byron Heath, Vice President of Portfolio and Business Development for Siemens Digital Buildings for the Middle East and Asia. He's dialing in from Singapore today to share with us his insight around infrastructure technology and how they are crucial to ensuring business continuity following COVID-19. Hi Byron, thank you so much for joining us today. Hi Thalia, thanks very much for having me. Our pleasure. So real estate leaders around the world are currently planning the re-entry of employees to physical office buildings. The general consensus is that this process will be gradual. And currently most companies in the US and Europe are limiting on-site workforce to essential employees only and will slowly introduce the rest of the workforce in the coming weeks and months. One of the problems, however, for real estate leaders is how to efficiently manage the use of energy and resources with fluctuating employee density in buildings. What are some ways technology can be leveraged in regard to energy conservation? It's really a relevant question that uh, more people should be thinking about. Uh, just because a building is empty doesn't mean that the energy usage drops to zero. You can't just shut down key systems like heating, ventilation, and air conditioning or, or HVAC. This can have negative effects on, on the air quality and also damage the systems. However, as HVAC uses 30% of the energy of a building, Building. This is typically uh, an area that a, uh, a building manager uh, would want to optimize. So that's traditionally what a building operator would do under such a crisis, provided they can get in the building. So for technology number one for me is really ensuring the building operators have a secure remote access to their building management system, the BMS. Um, I think people were surprised, some did not, uh, and, and that's really an issue. However, what I think people will find interesting is really how Comfy reacts to occupancy and adjusts HVAC and therefore uh, saves on energy costs, both on the uh, decline of occupancy and then the ramp up. So before talking about getting back into the office, I just want to speak about uh, really how things were ramped down. So in Singapore, for weeks before we were locked out of the building, people still had the option to work from home. Uh, that incremented over a period of time, over weeks. And if Comfy was installed with the, the temperature module, it would have automatically recognized there was fewer people with fewer requests for cooling, and it would have scaled that back. So it's tapering off cooling during this period where people were leaving the building. Uh, at the cutoff point where we're at a skeleton crew of uh, essential workers, Comfy again could be used on an individual basis uh, in a corralled area where people could get their blast of cool air for comfort. If they've had to go to other areas of the building, they wouldn't have to open up an entire floor. I could activate that zone for a moment of comfort as well. I think that's very important, not bugging the building operator to open up a whole floor. And on the going back to work, um, uh, in my region, we have Dubai that is heading back. They have only 30% people allowed back in the building. Uh, and therefore, as people come back, Comfy is going to recognize that this is ramping up. People are making the request for cool air. The algorithm is going to kick in and it's going to create an equilibrium. And again, it only delivers cooling where and when it's needed. And this is the key part. So as we are segregating the building of open and closed, this is where Comfy is going to have a real impact on HVAC. And I say cooling here because in my region in Singapore, it's 33 degrees every day, which is 92 for my American friends. So we only deal with cooling here. All right. Mm -hmm. uh, other benefits really for facility managers, safety personnel, it's the control they have over uh, which desks and which rooms that can be reserved. So by having a analytical view over the entire building, they're able to make an analysis to decide what areas should be uh, remain closed and what should be opened up as well. Mm -hmm. So, so on that note, actually, on the topic of, um, you know, configuring the workplace, you know, for hygiene and health safety, um, which are all going to be very top of mind for employees, you know, what are other ways that technology can help uh, be leveraged to ensure, you know, employees feel safe and, and healthy in the workplace in this in this time? Yeah, I mean, the health issue uh, is going to be a big concern. I'm sure it's on the mind of all the employees and have to be addressed by employers. The workplace is going to be affected by new regulation, new rules, new behaviors. Uh, in regards to technology, 
going beyond the workplace experience app that we're talking about, which is, is going to be a must. I see a lot of uh, crossover technologies, um, specifically from hospitals that are being used to combat and, and eliminate viruses and, and bacteria. Some very interesting technology that will probably make its way into public buildings. Um, permanent temperature screening would become possibly mandatory and uh, security measures to prevent those people from actually coming into the building if they, they have a temperature. You know, you talk about team rotation, uh, people working from home, people in the office. Uh, if it's not your turn to go in the office, again, Dubai only allows 30% people. Uh, they'll probably block you if it's not your rotation from going in the building. Your card won't work. A lot of touchless net technology we have to think is going to be implemented. Automatic doors, uh, washrooms will become completely touchless. A lot more interaction with the real world with our phone, calling an elevator and not touching buttons on the elevator. Uh, the way Comfy works to eliminate me having to, to touch um, public screens to reserve my, my meeting room, to not have to touch switches and buttons for aircon and lighting. I think we'll definitely be seeing things like this that uh, is going to ramp up. Now, in terms of uh, adoption and change in technology, I really believe that this is going to be accelerated based on this, this forced work from home experiment that we've all participated in. On the one side, people like myself, uh, I never desired to work from home. I've certainly learned that I can be productive. I can work from home. I had a meeting with the Chamber of Commerce yesterday. People of my age who, who aren't used to this, we all felt the same way that we've, we've really learned a lesson. Uh, on the flip side, you have companies and management who now realize that their employees can be productive at home. And this is going to open up the, the real possibility of a reconfigure of the office space, how um, desks will need to be spread further apart, which you know can run into limitations. So therefore, we can use Comfy actually to block rooms or desks to create bubble zones of appropriate distance between desks, which is, uh, is going to be very important. Comfy room booking um, uh, in the workplace also promotes safety. So employees will not be able to go to an area or a room. There's going to be a gap until disinfecting has actually taken place. That's going to be very important. And along with this whole desk sharing, and yes, I've had to come to terms with giving up my desk. It's, 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 Fine, it's what I'll have to do, take my Bali mask home. Um, but what's going to be important actually is wayfinding. So some people, they, they disregard wayfinding, but if you're in an unfamiliar place, you need to locate your desk, your room, your amenities, a printer, a pop-up mask, uh, uh, um, a dispensary. So I think wayfinding is going to be a, a key area that makes it frictionless. And some people disregard it, but, you know, I mentioned if in an airplane, most people can't find their seat. Here's a, a narrow hallway, one, one corridor with sequential numbers and labeled seats and people have a problem. So I really believe that wayfinding will be a crucial part to make it uh, effective and comfortable for people uh, in a new office environment this way. Mm -hmm. No, particularly, I think, you know, to connect people to the things that they're going to need, right? Like your example of kind of the pop-up stations or sanitation stations um, or, you know, which which desks are available on any given day. Um, so connecting exactly. folks to those, you know, necessary things in the workplace is, is going to be key. Um, you know, on, on, the, on the side of monitoring, you know, workplace data, um, you know, it's going to be key to ensuring business continuity. How would you, what would you say are the key metrics to take into consideration and what technologies do you think are needed to obtain those metrics? You know, we've been, we've been sort of talking about the metrics of occupancy and desks and rooms. Um, you know, everything that we've been talking about, it, it means nothing if you can't report on it, analyze it, use the results to make uh, improvements. Um, you know, the, the data portion is really close to my heart. This is the stuff that I love. You know, some companies just want to hang uh, banners and reminders, and that's great, but it isn't going to enforce new rules. We need to monitor and we need to verify and we need to report on it, especially if there's regulations behind that. So having one solution like Comfy to gather all the information, that has huge advantages. Uh, and as well as Comfy's integration, it's in its ability to ingest occupancy data uh, from sensors at a desk level, a room level, from an open space. Mm -hmm. You know, and then all of 
of this is encapsulated in the one analytic interface, Comfy Insights, and that's going to be crucial to obtain a complete overview of well-being and occupancy. You know, we can view this from a, a complete portfolio of buildings to a campus, mm -hmm. to a building, to a floor, to a group of rooms, a room, a group of desks, down to one desk. That's all encapsulated in, in one place, and that is going to be crucial. You know, um, when I look at all the use cases and how we've been working with Comfy, and it, it seems to really come full circle. Comfy has always been the, and, and wanted to be available for companies that, that want to be a company of choice, to be able to attract top talent, to be that workplace experience. And nothing shows that you care about your employees more than their health and safety. So this really dovetails into everything that we've been doing already. I can imagine questions from prospective top talents in the future. You know, they may ask about methods and frequency of, of mm -hmm. disinfecting a company's social distancing policy or, or what is the seating arrangements like? What is the uh, employee space allocation? Your work from home policies. And companies have to think how they're going to address this. Um, Things have changed, they will continue to change, and I can only um, hope that they have changed for the better. Mm -hmm. I wholeheartedly agree. Well, thank you so much for your time today, Byron. Uh, we so appreciate you sharing your perspectives with all of us, um, particularly in this, um, you know, as we all navigate this time of change um, and stay tuned for more uh, around perspectives uh, in this COVID-19 world. Thanks so much. Thank you very much.